Kwon Gangnam Style. Welcome to episode 6 from our series on chapter 13, RNA and protein synthesis. We've already gone over what are the types of RNA. We've gone over the process of transcription. We've gone over the process of translation. And we've also gone over how is the genetic code read. In other words, if you have a codon, what amino acid does it actually code for? So in this episode, in the, in the final episode, we're going to talk about the different kinds of mutations. Now, the definition of a mutation is here in red. It's any change to the base sequence of DNA or RNA. Now, mutations may cause a change in amino acid sequence. Now, when you change the amino acid sequence, you may make the protein non-functional or you could make it have new function because the word muta mutation, we usually think it means bad, but it doesn't have to be. It simply means change. Sometimes mutations are good. So think of like you're a bacterium and you're confronted with a new antibiotic and it kills all of your neighbors, all of your brothers and sisters, but you survive. Why did you survive this antibiotic? Because you have a mutation. This mutation has given you a new trait which makes you better able to survive your environment, and that would be called a good mutation. Okay, now, a change in amino acid sequence usually causes a change in shape. And when you have a change in shape, you have a change in function. It's often bad, but it doesn't have to be, okay? If you remember from chapter two, a protein's function is determined by its shape. The amino acid sequence is its primary structure. And the primary structure is going to determine the secondary structure, folds or coils, the tertiary structure, which the folds and coils will uh, fold back over on itself. And it's also going to determine the quaternary structure, which is the addition of another protein to form a globular protein. Okay, So this guy here makes everything happen. And if you change it, you can ruin all this stuff and... That protein doesn't work, and that can often be bad, but it could be good. Okay, so let's look at a type of mutation that is called a gene mutation. Gene mutations are also known as a point mutation because it affects a single point or a single base within the protein, okay, or within the, uh, the gene. Okay, so I'm going to write on this here a little bit, K3. All right, so point mutation... It affects a single nucleotide and therefore a single base. So it affects a single point on the gene. All right? Now, gene mutations or point mutations come in three flavors. And if you remember, S, I, D, these are it. In a substitution you're going to substitute one base for another. So in, if you originally had an A, you've substituted a G for it. So if it read AUG, it will now read GUG. Now, what's really important about a substitution is that it affects only one amino acid. The average protein is going to have 300 amino acids in it. So 299 of those amino acids will be in the exact correct place, but we have one amino acid was changed. Now, sometimes a substitution leads to what is called a silent mutation. And silent mutations are usually caused by a change in the third letter of a codon. Let me get myself caught up here. And the reason that the third letter isn't as important as the first two letters is because there's 64 codons, but there's only 20 amino acids. Okay? So some of these codons are going to code for the same amino acids. Like when we were going over the code wheel, we saw that there was four codons that coded for the exact same amino acid. So if you change the third letter, it didn't matter. It was still going to code for that particular amino acid. Okay? 
Now, these two guys down here, they're going to, whoops, they're going to cause what is known as a frame shift mutation because it alters the reading frame. And this is an insertion. Uh, let's get a new color in here. Let's go with that. Um, a new base is placed in the sequence. All right. And then a deletion, you take away a base. So here's a classic example. We have the fat cat ate the rat. And notice these are just like codons. One, two, three letters. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? So what if I added in the letter B right there? The fat BCA, TAT, ETH, ERA, and then nonsense. Okay? That don't make any sense. I don't know what that's going to code for. It's just gibberish and junk. Okay, so let's do the opposite. Uh, let's let me uh, let me erase this. Let me get this down here again. Okay, so let's go with this. Okay, so fat cat ate the rat. Okay, one, two, three, four, five codons should code for five particular amino acids. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get rid of this T. It's been deleted. So now our, code T, uh, now our codons are FAC, have no idea what that codes for, ATA, TET, HER, AT. That doesn't make any sense. We've altered the reading frame. So what happens when insertions and deletions, every codon after the point mutation is changed? You are radically going to change the amino acid sequence, and you are radically going to change the shape of that protein, and that thing's probably not going to work, okay? Frame shift mutations, whoops, these guys are typically really, really bad, 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 very, very bad mutations. Silent mutations, substitutions, not that big a deal. You know, it could be a big deal depending on what the protein is, but we have a great chance of it being no deal because of the silent mutation stuff. All right. Uh, we've got a graphic up here that's going to explain all these different ones to you. Okay, and let's use, let's use green for this one. All right. So wild type is a word that simply means normal. So this is our normal uh, RNA, or I'm sorry, DNA. This is the mRNA that was made from it. So that was done through transcription. We would translate it. We get MET, LYS, PHE, and GLY, and there's your stop codon. So we got one, two, three, four um, protein, or amino acids in our protein, and it's going to have this order. That's perfect, normal, everything's good. Okay, so now we have a silent mutation. And if you look right here, we had ATG, blah, blah, blah. But if you look right in this spot right there, we changed this uh, A to a... Uh, I got myself here all confused. There we go. There we go. So we're talking about this area right here. We change that to an A, which makes us a T. So we go G U U. No change. Everything stayed the same. Okay, let's get rid of that stuff. Okay, down here we have a missense mutation. Think of misspence as like misspelled. And all we've done is we substituted. This would be a substitution. We've changed this to a T instead of a C, and we've only changed this one amino acid. As you see, one, two, three are the same, but instead of having glycine, we now have serine. Just a missense mutation, okay? Now we have something weird down here. This one is still a substitution. We've substituted an A instead of a T, but we've made a stop codon at the wrong place. And now our protein only has one amino acid. Well, this is what we call a truncated protein. Truncated is a fancy word that means short. This is just a short protein. All right. Now, if you look at this, we only have one amino acid. That's a really short protein. It does not have this shape. This is not going to work. Okay. 
nonsense mutations, these guys are bad. This one may not be as bad. All right, now let's look at some frame shifts. Okay, extra. What we have going on here, oops, this is called an insertion. We've stuck in this A, which will have a pair of a T. And this one is actually called an immediate nonsense. So we have a stop codon again. And once again, we have made a truncated protein. And what do we know about truncated proteins? They're bad. Okay, That protein has no function. That could be a lethal mutation for that organism. Okay, In this one right down here, we have a deletion. We've taken away an A. That's been deleted. So we've also taken away that U. So our reading frame is going to shift to the left. And now every amino acid from here on out is going to be different. And that is going to be a totally different shape protein. Probably not going to do its function. And that organism is going to have problems. Okay. Here... On this last and final one, we've deleted a single codon, which means we're going to have a missing amino acid. And that's going to be bad because we're definitely going to change the shape. All right, So this one's bad, that one's bad, and obviously we already went over that one's bad. Okay, This one's not as bad because we had that silent one. Okay. This graphic is going to show you how things can change in that protein. All right, so make sure that you've written all this stuff down. This might be one that you want to review. You don't have to go over all these single details, but you do want to know. Let's get a different color in here. You do want to know what a silent mutation is. You do want to know what missense means. You do know want to know what a uh, nonsense one is, which will lead to this truncated protein. And then you do want to know the difference between an insertion and a deletion and how that can lead to an extensive missense or we can also have the nonsense and have something really bad okay all right that's going to add that's going to end this episode we have one more to go in this series this one's going to be on a chromosome mutations so until the next time we'll catch you on the flip side